All right, everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about the war on cheating in online poker. So um, I have a pretty personal stake in this one. Um, so I've got a, a, a team that I invest in, a stable, um, where I finance these professional players. And I, I finance around 100 professional players to play and compete, you know, in a fair way. And um, I get, you know, we, we have arrangements where we basically profit share if they're successful. Um, and if they lose, I take all the losses. So that's, that's essentially how, how that works. I've got about 100 of these guys that work with me. And uh, so, you know, I, I'm very interested in, uh, in combating and doing whatever we have to to, uh, to combat cheating in online poker. So the problem, and, and so for people who don't maybe understand what the problem is in, uh, with respect to cheating or how cheating even takes place, the problem is basically that um, there are tools that we use um, to study the game, okay? And there are tools that are, uh, that are very fit, efficient, they're very fast, and we can use these tools to improve our understanding of how the game uh, is, should be played, okay? Now, the issue is that these tools that we use to get better when we're not playing the game, so that we understand better how to play when we do play the game, these same tools can then be weaponized, essentially, in real time um, to gain an unfair advantage uh, when, when people are playing. In addition to that, there are, there are also forms of collusion where players might share. Like, if you have two players who are friends in the same room and they're competing against a third player who's in a different country, they might share whole cards or private information, essentially, to try to gain an edge on a third party. So these are some of the um, issues or ways that someone might cheat in online poker in, uh, in 2022. Now, um, this is a pretty high stakes game for the poker sites themselves, okay? So um, investment banks have cited as like, uh, have cited AI um, and like, you know, essentially superhuman AI um, and its ability to compete in the games um, and educate players, et cetera, as a risk for, um, as a risk case and a reason for business valuation reductions. Okay, so now if you borrow money um, as a publicly traded company and your the valuation of your business is reduced, um, the cost of your capital is probably going to rise. So the interest rates that you'll get charged might might go up. At the same time, your the compensation that you play your that you pay your employees. Um, well, if, if fifty if you pay them fifty percent with 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 cash and fifty percent with stock options, then and those options are worth less money, then you have to pay them either more cash or more stock options, which dilutes the equity in the business. So having um, a business valuation reduction. Uh, is, is a real material threat for publicly traded companies. And as a result, um, the game, the stakes are quite high. And that's always been my kind of defensive posture. If you've ever followed me on, on Twitch, if you've ever watched one of my streams, people get asked this question all the time. Like, you know, how do you feel about cheating? And I'm like, it's a really big problem for poker sites, right? Like, it's a really big issue for them. And I trust them to, um, to kind of to deal with it. So, um, you know, one of the, the major networks that, we are, that a lot of players play on today is GG. And um, GG re recently um, had a, uh, you know, over a year ago, um, had a, a very, fairly significant event where they banned a lot of um, online poker players and a lot of those players were accused of cheating. Those players um, will have until August 15th actually to appeal um, uh, for cheating, August 15th, 2022. And then um, on August 22nd, um, a, a decision will be reached about whether or not those players should be reinstated. So one can assume that there's not going to be a lot of in-depth analysis done between August 15th and August 22nd. Okay, so given that that's probably the case, right? You have a bunch of players, maybe you have 100 people who, 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 were, who were banned. I have no idea what the volume or number of players is. I'm just speculating. Um, you're not going to do like an in-depth case review for each player. I don't know if you've, ever, if you've ever dealt with customer support at a poker site. I'm not naming any site in particular. But if you've ever dealt with customer support at a poker site, they're not doing an in-depth analysis, you know, of every single case in seven days. It just ain't happening. So... There clearly were cases where they've now decided as a network that those players committed very minor infractions and the action against them was um, extreme, basically, in my opinion. Now, I do think that they'll probably, they'll probably say something like, um, when they probably already have said something to the effect of, um, those players have been punished enough and now we think that, you know, that their punishment has been exhausted and we're going to allow them to continue to play on the site. And that's great if that's what the excuse that they want to use, but they probably just feel like, you know, the, uh, the truth of the matter is like the, the players probably had minor infractions and maybe a warning was more appropriate. They were banned. And um, those players have until August 15th to uh, try to get their accounts reinstated. And then a, again, a decision will, will be reached on August 22nd um, with respect to whether or not that takes place. Okay. So again, in my opinion, probably not, Probably it's probably already been decided what criteria will get your account reinstated beforehand. And in my opinion, there will be some people who have no shot at getting their accounts reinstated because their offense was just too egregious and they're just nowhere close to coming back. 
Um, so that's that's kind of like one part. I think that's you know that's great. It's, it's news. It's cool. Um, on the next the next part though, which is why we're here, it's just these two things kind of coincide. But the reason, real reason, we're here is to talk about the um, uh, the poker the poker integrity council, which I think is a really cool innovative idea, and it really goes goes to the point of attacking the humans that are behind the cheating, as opposed to. Um, you know, the cheating, the cheating it, it, itself. So, um, the, the Poker Integrity Council, first of all, I can kind of explain what it is. So first it's led by Jason Kuhn, um, probably like pillar of online poker integrity, um, achievement, um, et cetera. Like he doesn't really need to be justified. So, you know, he's the guy that heads it. I think that's fucking awesome. So Jason Kuhn leading this, there's a team of five. Um, I believe, uh, they, they will evaluate, um, cases that are brought to them. These will only be high stakes cases. Um, there are obviously other systems in place for players that play lower uh, lower limits, but this for high stakes players, there would be this Poker Integrity Council, um, five a team of five humans, males, females, whatever, five people, and um, they will deal with uh, cases on a case by case basis. Each member of this council will be um, individually reviewing um, cheating cases. So again, so the the sourcing of the cheating is done by the network. It's brought to this council. They evaluate each case individually, and then they will um, reach a decision by majority. If they, in, if the, through their own efforts and work, they decide that um, you know so and so is cheating. Um, now, the the real teeth of this thing, and the reason that this is interesting, and the reason I think this will work, is um, that the most extreme case, uh, or or the range of cases or consequences, I should say, if you're found cheating, will be. Will, will on the one hand be a warning, uh, which is I don't know how this Poker Integrity Council will give you a warning really. Like how to, I don't know how they'll figure out that you're like kind of sort of cheating. That seems difficult to me. But well, nonetheless, there the the consequences range from from warning all the way to industry blacklist with you know a confiscation of funds. So that's a pretty that's a pretty fucking extreme outcome. I mean, if you get an industry and, and the the thing about that industry blacklist is that um, WPT WSOP, Triton, all of the major live stops that you know that high stakes players live off of, those will all those have all signed on. Okay, and I do think that the smaller online poker networks will also sign on in the end, um, and that's because you know I, th I think that if you're an online if you're a major online poker site and this initiative comes from GG and you view GG as a major competitor, you're probably not going to sign on, or at least you might hesitate to sign on. But if you're a smaller poker network, this is just a way to um, uh, this is just a way to suggest to your player base that you are combating cheating, essentially. Um, and so it's a way to add more integrity to your network. Um, it, it, it essentially, what it does is it reduces the costs for a smaller network of um, combating cheating. And you know, given the way given the way that scale works in uh, the online poker industry, it's a, that's a big deal. So I think that um, I, I do think you're likely to get smaller poker networks to to sign on. Um, I think you might see the really large competing networks with GG uh, hesitate, which is, for business reasons, pretty understandable. I think that they should sign on, um, but you know, nonetheless, it's 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 kind of whatever. Um, and yeah, I, th I think this is just like it's a it's a crazy new thing. Again, this is going to be focused on high stakes, um, and I mean, <sighs> shit, like it's pretty exciting. Um, it's it, it's pretty cool. I think that having Industry-wide blacklists are going to be a major deterrent. So when you think about the human, like the, the human side of this, right? Like let's say you're a poker player, and you let's say you have an EV as a professional player of like hundred thousand dollars a year, and let's say you think that if you cheat, you can get it to two hundred. It's only one extra year of EV. So if you get banned from online poker and from all live stops, you now have to go like do something else, right? So, you know, I, I've, because I work with so many online poker players, like I work with a lot of pros and I've worked with lots of pros throughout my career. I've been a coach since I started playing. Um, so, most online poker players don't have very steep opportunity costs. Not to say that none of them do. I've worked with some that were like, you know, physicists and doctors. Um, and pharmacists and things like I've worked with some players like that, but mostly they're like me, where I was at you know I was at Seven Eleven and Urban Planet and I was a door to door salesman. That was my career prior to being an online poker player. So career, right? So like 
I'm, you know, if you took poker away from me, I would, I would have been shit out of luck. Like I would have been in a hard place. So I do think that um, by basically increasing the costs of cheating for human, you know, for, on the human side, dramatically, like making it dramatically more expensive to cheat um, if you get caught. I think that that's a real sharp deterrent. Um, I think it's a really innovative solution. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be f- fucking awesome. It, it is a lot of work uh, for each player to undertake. And so, you know, you can ask, like, why are the players doing this? And I have no idea what the arrangement would be. But I can pretty much guarantee you that a huge component of why these players would take the time to do this is because they want to create an opportunity for the next generation of poker pros. So these guys are wildly successful, um, you know, poker players. They, they're not going to do, like, even if they're getting paid, I don't know, $500 an hour, which I don't think is going to be the case, um, they don't need the money. Uh, the people that are going to be on this council. So they're doing this because they really want um, to to do the best they can to ensure that there's an opportunity for a younger generation of professional players that are trying to do this and, you know, to do the best they can to try to eradicate online poker. uh, Eradicate cheating in online poker. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's phenomenal. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm really encouraged by it. Um, You know, I still still am personally very exposed to um, cheating, if there's cheating in online poker, I'm very exposed to it. Just like, you know, someone who's playing casually is like, I'm going to take a big hit. I stake a hundred people. So, um, yeah, any, 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 anything that's, that, that happens on this front is, is very good for, not only for me financially and for my business, but also, you know, for the players that, you know, kind of like I said that, uh, that the council themselves is doing this to create an opportunity for a younger generation of pros. Like, it's really important to me that the players who work with me, um, have confidence that, you know, that it's it's dream killing is I think again the, the phrase that someone used to describe the cheating revelations that had taken place over the last six months. So, you know, it's just important to me. It's it's really uh, encouraging, like I said, to see all this you know kind of play out. Um, it's something that I'm following now, um, and uh, I just want to kind of you know keep everyone here abreast of of whatever I learn and and, and whatever I think. So, thanks very much for taking the time to uh, to listen to me and. Um, yeah, hopefully the uh, the war on cheating and online poker continues. But again, I think with the costs getting so steep, um, maybe the future is a little bit brighter than it was um, before this. So thank you, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.